Are pointers something you should avoid in embedded systems? Let's discuss. Welcome back. Thank you all for being here. Especially want to thank all of those that help support this channel on Patreon. I really appreciate your help. This week, I wanted to respond to a question. The question is from Rama, and he says he had an interview and ran into a question about pointers and specifically why pointers are not used in embedded C. And that is a good question, and I wanted to see if I can help out. Because the short answer is that pointers are used in embedded C, and I wasn't there in the interview but either the question is poorly worded or maybe the questioner is ill-informed. But what I think this interview question is trying to get at is an issue that we that does come up a lot, which is uh, non-determinism and predictability. When I write a piece of code, I want to be able to predict whether it's going to work correctly or not, whether it's going to be fast or slow, right? We like to be able to predict what's going to happen when we run our code. Most of all, we want to make sure that it satisfies the needs of our users, and that seems pretty straightforward, but it can actually be trickier than it seems especially on embedded systems. For example, let's look at memory usage. How much heap space, how much stack space do I need when this program is gonna run? Now on a laptop, desktop, or server, we do have some features that the operating system and the hardware provides, like paging and virtual memory, that help us not worry too much about this. If my program happens to use an extra megabyte of memory, it's, I mean, it might be annoying, it might slow things down a tiny bit, but it's probably not going to make a huge difference. On the other hand, if I am working on a little microcontroller like this guy that has only eight kilobytes of RAM, then if I am using an extra kilobyte or two of RAM, this could actually cause some real problems. It could cause my stack to grow to a point where it collides with my heap or you know overwrites my global variables. And of course, this can lead to variable corruption and some of the worst debugging experiences of your entire life. And this is more problematic in embedded systems because in a lot of embedded systems, if your program crashes or hangs or gets into some weird state where it's not functioning properly, you can't always just have the user go out there and reboot it. I mean, when you're using your laptop and one of your programs crash, yeah, it's annoying, but usually you just restart it and you move on. Maybe you report it to the company that made the software, but beyond that, as long as it usually kind of works, it's usually okay. If on the other hand, the firmware in your car has a problem or the firmware in your pacemaker that's controlling your heart, if any of these have a problem, the consequences can be much more significant. So typically in embedded programming, we try to avoid things that are going to make our program's behavior less predictable. Places where bugs could hide, things that could cause crashes or infinite loops or corruption at some point in our program. So one example is we often avoid dynamic memory allocation. So that is malloc, calloc, realloc, and free, as well as new and delete if you're in C++. Now, I recently made a video in which I tried to map out what happens on the heap and how blocks are allocated. So check out that one if you missed it. But in that video, you might have noticed that our blocks aren't always right up next to each other. We get fragmentation, we get chunks of space in between, depending on the pattern of blocks that we allocated. And sometimes our heap grows in ways that we didn't necessarily predict. And of course, as I mentioned before, we wanna be able to predict how much memory we're using. It's not a good idea if our heap can be variable, unpredictable sized at runtime. And so we often try to avoid this. And anytime you're working with a memory constrained embedded system, you're often going to try to use static allocation instead of dynamic allocation. And of course, if you need something that's a little more dynamic, there are some less dangerous approaches, things like object pools. And I'll probably talk about object pools in a future video. Let me know if you're particularly interested in that one, but that's definitely in the plan. Also, we try to avoid recursive functions. Now, the reason for this is that every time you call a function, you get a stack frame, right? You, get, you create a new frame on the stack, the stack grows. Well, with a recursive function, each time the function calls itself, the stack grows. And if we don't have a limit on how many times you can recurse, you can get an infinitely large stack and that can cause all sorts of problems. You know, that's the problem we were talking about where your stack grows down and starts to overlap with things like global variables or things on the heap. And so like dynamic memory allocation, recursive functions are definitely something that I try to avoid when working on embedded systems that have really tight memory constraints. And of course, back to the original question, when using points Pointers, we do need to be really careful. We want to make sure that those pointers do point where they're supposed to. I mean, that's something you always want to focus on, but anytime that you introduce indirection into your code, there are opportunities for bugs to lurk. And so you want to be really careful. Just make sure you double check your pointers. And specifically, perhaps the most dangerous are function pointers. I will say that a lot of embedded programmers avoid function pointers because something happens to that pointer and all of a sudden you're running code, but it's really like, who knows what it is. You, you point to the wrong place in memory and 
and all of a sudden you're running that and you can get all kinds of weird behavior that you really don't need in your life. So Rama, I hope that helps clear things up for your next interview and for all of you. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next week.